and AIA Australia, helping your clients in their time of need is our number one priority. In 2016, we paid over $1.15 billion in claims to both retail and group members. That's over $4.5 million every working day. To offer your clients cover you can trust, chat to your AIA CDM today. Good afternoon, XYers. Uh, Ray Dramas of XY Advisor here. Really excited to uh, be doing this XY Live podcast with Scott Parry of uh, Crown Money Management and Crown Wealth Management. I actually organised this uh, with Scott probably towards the start of the year uh, via an introduction and it's, it's something that's been front of mind for me for quite a while, understanding the intricacies of you know, how, how clients um, are perhaps interested in it, how it works, is it, is it something that works, is it dangerous? Um, you know, all sorts of questions that uh, I guess early adopters get asked. Um, but before I do, just a real quick update on, on XY Advisor. We've got the, the Facebook group, which is really trugging along now. So um, I think we're, we're just shy of uh, 1,100 members. So a big congratulations to the community. And the engagement within that just continues to grow as well. So as I was saying to Scott earlier, when, when people ask me, uh, you know, my views on the financial services industry uh, for tomorrow, I, I look no further than, than the uh, organic growth of the community. And that's, that's totally um, on, on you guys. So it's so an absolute uh, congratulations to, to you all. Um, as we near the end of the year, and it's, it's funny to sort of say that, or, or, you know, or, already um, we will be coming out with uh, many more updates with what our plans are for 2018. It's going to be a, a year with, I think, a, a, a fairer um, Australian-wide agenda where we're really going to look at uh, being in every, every city across, across the country and, um, yeah, really building a presence, especially for those of you that aren't in either Sydney, Melbourne, or, or Brisbane, which we've sort of touched this year. Um, but, but with that, uh, Scott, I, I might ask uh, for you to, to perhaps introduce a, a little bit more about yourself and, uh, and the business. Sure. Uh, my name's Scott Parry. I am the founder of Crown Money Management. We are a debt cash flow management company. We've been running for 14 years uh, in every capital city of Australia. Um, we always try to help clients move forward financially. And what we've just found is most clients want to become debt free and retiring with a mortgage we all know is, is quite a battle and so if we can help that client uh, retire debt free they're not going to have to cannibalize their superannuation balance and as a result their lifestyle and retirement is going to be a lot stronger yeah wonderful um you know personally i, I, I work in a business where we, we we work with a bit of an older client base and uh unfortunately i have seen that that age-old strategy of um you know, well, downsizing at, at retirement to knock off the debt probably isn't something that works as strongly as it did previously because no one's after those large manners every more, every, uh, anymore. You know, retirees and, and uh, uh, the, the first home buyers or younger generations are all after that same asset. Um, so I'm not sure. Are you, are you seeing, seeing that coming through? Yeah, it's something where, I mean, like the times have changed. I mean, 10 years ago, that was relevant advice where you could downsize and I mean, now we know with property prices, you're really just trading. I mean, it's very rare that you're going to be able to find something as cheap because when you do downsize, you want to be closer to the amenities, cities, those sort of um, areas where you've got all this time in retirement. So you want to be spending some time um, basically being able to investigate and explore the city that you are living in. So the price for those sort of properties are quite similar to the property you're usually selling. And so the whole downsize to a cheaper um, environment or cheaper properties quite rare these days we're finding with most of our clients that are going into retirement yeah do you do you have a sense that your clients are, are keen on you know really being aggressive knocking down the debt because we're in such a low interest rate environment or is it perhaps an opportunity to uh, you know gear up and, and build an asset base and or, or upgrade the home yeah really good point to no matter what the interest rates are doing, we're finding that 74% of our clients, when we ask what's your number one financial goal, are saying, I want to be debt free. I want to own my own home. And so it doesn't matter if rates are going up or going down, that whole home ownership is just ingrained in us Australians from the get go. Um, and just that it is the great Australian dream is to own yeah. your own plot of land freehold. So uh, rates going up or down, we just find that when rates are going down, they're able to accelerate that debt reduction a lot faster. Do you do you buy into the uh, the interest only loan being the the subprime debt of Australia and all of this sort of stuff that we saw in the the media? Uh, geez, a couple of months back. 
Uh, no, I don't actually. I mean, something where we've come from a period where principal interest is obviously the core, and I really feel that's a great safety net. Um, but a lot of people got different uses for interest only. And so, I mean, you're finding that some clients, for example, may have a child and not want the financial strain of a principal interest payment. And so they may want to just go interest only for two to three years whilst there's one income that's not being um, um, used because they're having to care for the child there. So, so many uses for interest only. And I wouldn't sort of put everything under the one umbrella. And I certainly don't see it as a subprime now. Yeah, uh, it, make, it makes me laugh, you know, uh, some, some of the strategies that we come up with, uh, you know, when, once you do have that loan locked in from the bank, for me personally, I'm not sure why you, if you can be financially disciplined, you know, why throwing the money into an offset account and giving yourself that choice, rather than having to apply for a refinance in, in the future if something were to happen, you know, um, I think that can perhaps start to skew the numbers, you know, would you sort of subscribe to that as well? 100%, absolutely right, yeah. yeah. So what sort of clients do you work with, Scott? Mainly accumulators. Um, we're finding that um, our average client is that everyday Australian just wanting to own their own home. Uh, we're not really into the high net worth space. Uh, we're not really dealing with the um, retirees as such. What we've really found a beautiful niche in is the pre-retirees. Anyone around about the age of 50 who has debt on their home, I mean, they're quite motivated and they have that urgency to want to be paying that down within that 15 year period before they do stop working. So it's been a really great niche for us. There's some 50 plus clients or 50 year old clients who do have debt and just really helping put up a strategy where 15 years from now, you will be debt free. You won't have to touch your superannuation balance. And then from there, you're able to live a better quality lifestyle. That, that 10 year runway into retirement. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, they've got great cash flow there. The kids are usually off their hands. And so they're really focused on, on paying down that debt and just putting them to the right structure with a strategy um, just helps that debt elimination um, go to plan. Okay. So, you know, obviously you, you've got that, that debt solution, which, which uh, plugs into the, the mortgage side of the business, but you also mentioned cash flow management, which, you know, I know, especially for, for XY advisors, it's, uh, you know, a really wonderful idea. Um, I think perhaps the struggle is how you, how you do that commercially. Um, and in a way where you're not lugging on such an expensive fee proposal that it doesn't, doesn't make sense for the client anymore. Absolutely. Um, it's, it is something where you've got to have the systems and process in place. It's a very, I'd say, heavy uh, labor intensive uh, process, actually managing someone's cash flow. I mean, we do it week to week. So where this wow. sits is basically uh, are in a position where having done this for 13, 14 years, we've got a great team of, of money coaches behind us. And we're now at a position where we're just white labeling that for a lot of uh, financial planning and accounting financial service providers where, hey, your client wants cash flow management. We know that's not your speciality. Uh, we'll white label a program for you. Your clients will think it's all you. We'll do all the legwork in the background and help that client manage that cash flow a little bit more efficiently so they can pay down debt a little bit faster. That's, yeah, wow. Well, okay. So I guess the, the one rather, I mean, we can learn a little bit more about exactly what that is, but I imagine one of the benefits is that the, the advisor um, is, is retaining that relationship because you're, you're kind of the, under the bonnet, but you're not the badge on the front. <laughs> oh, no, that's 100% correct. I mean, at the end of the day, the advisor always wants to be that client's financial hero. And so we just want to yeah. assist them and, and provide the basic tools and the program without any of their time, effort, or energy required. So we're there consistently every single month. We tell the advisor what their client's surplus cash flow position is, what their client's equity position is, and consistently driving down bad debt to free up that equity so then they can further increase their funds under management and use that uh, debt that they've paid down to reinvest into growth assets. So when, when you say, well, uh, sorry, cash flow coaching, is it, is it a behavioral thing or is it a structural thing? How do you, what's, what's sort of the, the process? Yeah, for sure. So every client gets a personal money coach. And so what we've found with these uh, people is we always perform better when we've got accountability and self-discipline. And so what I've found over the last 13, 14 years of doing this is we need to save Australians from themselves. I mean, we're not that disciplined uh, personally, otherwise no one would have a personal trainer. And so everyone going to the gym will just have a gym membership and be fit, but we just don't have that discipline um, ingrained into us. And so that's where we come in and we build the in, uh, in 
build the discipline and the accountability so the client just knows exactly where they're at each and every week. Uh, we basically manage that cash flow, say, hey, tell us what you need for your food, your fuel, your entertainment. We transfer that into their, what I call a visa debit account or a spending account. They blow that for the week. At the end of the week, another $500, $600, $700 comes across. And so we want to take the financial stress out of their life. Most clients don't know what they can or what they can't spend. And so by doing this full money management program, we say, this is what you can spend. You're great at spending. Just spend it. Don't have to think about budgeting or bills. And we take care of all the rest. Having that money pay off principle, all their bills are obviously paid. And that client could just go about living life rather than having to try and manage their money. Yeah, you know, one of, one of my colleagues uh, talks about the idea of this cognitive uh, minimalism where you, you, you build a process where everything is, is automated, but, but automated thoughtfully so that you've, you've got the professionals, you're sort of outsourcing the, the, the financial uh, strain, I guess, uh, you know, out, out of your life. So you, it's, it's just as simple as, you know, I go to the ATM and I've got my cash and that's, that comes through every week and everything else works. Hold on. Everything has to be automated. I think that's really the secret to saving, especially it's got to be automated out of sight, out of mind and just let them do what they do best, which is spend. Yeah, most certainly. Um, you know, what, what do you find uh, clients really enjoy about the service? Uh, I think just no financial stress, you know, they can just yeah. literally go, I've got five, six, $700 to spend. Um, and what that does, it gets them conscious they're spending. I think that's really the problem with credit cards these days. I've got a little bit of a fetish. I do chop up most clients' credit cards. I, I really find that getting them onto a, what I call a cash diet gets them accountable and shifts their psychology when they spend. And, and so all the numbers are coming out where uh, Coles and Woolworths are saying, if you go and do your grocery shopping every Saturday on credit card, you will spend... 14% more than what you would if you just took a Visa debit card or with cash. And so that's just a psychology play. Same as McDonald's, they just came out with a study saying, you walk into McDonald's with a credit card, you'll spend 47% more on your meal than if someone walked in with cash. So what we've got, it's a very, it's 80% behavioral in my eyes. And if we can help save the client from themselves, they're gonna be the beneficiaries there. Uh, you, you might not know, it was just a question I thought as you asked, you know, people are happy to spend more using the credit card over cash. I wonder if that's true for debit cards as well. It's, there is, I mean, cash is at sort of the absolute dream. Um, Visa debit cards are a little bit higher and then credit cards are just off the charts. And that's because the pain registered when they're paying or tapping. I mean, you've got to think about it. 10 years ago, to actually pay on a credit card, we had to sign and all this time, effort and energy. And then from there, we had to then put in our pin and now it's just tap like that pay wave, there is zero pain registered. You don't even feel like a transaction is taking place. And so that's all happening deliberately for obvious reasons there. But you've really just got to educate that client, say, hey, you, you're actually spending. I mean, I see a client with, a, I've seen a client with 160 grand in credit card debt. And I mean, that just says, Scott, I've spent $160,000 more than what I've earned. That's all credit card debt says. And so if you can help your client spend less than what they're earning, they're going to be moving forward and making financial progress. Yeah, for, for those that have been fortunate enough to, to go to Cuba, as I did earlier in the year, it's, you know, it, it's a cash, cash society. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's what I feel like uh, it would have been growing up in the 1970s or 1980s. And, uh, you know, for me, handing over cash for every little thing, I was like, bloody hell, is this, is this actually how much I'm spending? Um, but the reality is it would have been much cheaper than what I'm doing every day in Sydney. Absolutely right. We had a client who, who did the experiment. I, I do experiments with clients all the time. And when I first sit with them, I said, this Saturday, can you just do me one favor? Tell me what you roughly spend on groceries. They would say $200. So can you just take $200 out of your ATM and just walk into Coles or Woolworths without any cards whatsoever and just have your $200 in cash? And you watch how differently you shop. You, for the first time, are going to become conscious of what yes. you're spending. And so yeah. with a credit card, it's very hard to become conscious. And most people's mindset is, I'm not at my limit, therefore I can afford it. That's definitely not the way to go. Yeah, there's, there's certainly that, that gap, I think, between, you know, what, what the bank will give you and, and what's affordable. You know, I think, I think there's probably two different definitions there. And also, I mean, the argument is, well, I'm not paying any interest on my credit card. Well, it's not the argument. The argument is you're spending more because you're using a credit card. And so a lot of people sort of feel that sense of security where oh, I'm not paying any interest. Everything's OK. I'm comfortable. It's like, yeah, well, things could be a little bit better financially and we could tweak them. I'd be keen to learn your thoughts again, because a lot of advisors are, are sort of thinking about different value propositions and I haven't sort of quite made the leap yet. So, you know, are, are there any sort of tips that you would, th you would, you know, uh, suggest for those that are thinking, you know, I, I do wealth well and I, I, I do uh, insurances. I understand how that works commercially for me. And I'm thinking about cash flow because yeah. ultimately I need to 
add add to my my value proposition as as things uh, move on in time. Is there any any sort of tips that you 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 have for for guys that are thinking about that sort of stuff or girls? Sorry. Sure. So, with cash flow management, I mean it's not sexy by any stretch of the imagination, but you've got to look at what's the end goal of that. The end goal of that is they're out of debt faster. Effective cash flow management means you're debt free quicker. That's really what clients want. And I mean, all of us advisors, we've done our fact finds and we know you go through the client goals at the top of the list. Most of the time for accumulators is path my house, become debt free. And so by actually helping them manage their cash flow effectively, that then gets them that goal, which is obviously a, a faster debt free result. So for those advisors who are looking at potentially going into cash flow, that the benefit of that is faster home ownership. Um, and from there, you've, you've got to add value. There was a report done, a uh, white paper done a few years ago where they studied uh, to over 2,000 clients of advisors and they surveyed them and said, what would you like your advisor doing? And 98%, I'd like them doing cash flow management. They said, I'd love my advisor to obviously help me with that. And then the clients were then asked, would you be prepared to pay more than what you're currently paying your advisor if they were to do cash flow management? 87% said yes, I'll pay wow. my more than what I'm paying them now if they help me with cash flow management. So you've got 98% of people wanting it and 87% of them saying, yeah, I'll pay you more than what I'm already paying you. So um, the demand's there, but this, the actual program and the structure, that's where we can come in and so say doing it every day for 13, 14 years, we just white label this program. It's all you, you're the hero. We just do all the, the work and the 21 touch points per year just to make sure that client's getting over-serviced. So, what, so sorry, just to clarify that, what, what is that 21 touch points? Yeah, so we, we touch every client 21 times per year. So every client, every single month uh, gets a cash flow report, an equity report. We personally handwrite on every single client's report from the advisor. So they think their advisor's doing all these um, amazing levels of service. And it's also good for opt-ins, you know. I mean, when you've got to get that client to sign that yeah. opt-in, well, man, my advisor's literally touching me 21 times per year. Um, all the uh, statements coming out every single month in their envelope. So the branding every single month um, of that uh, financial planning company is hitting that client and um, they're very, very happy that I'm moving forward, I'm making progress. The most frustrating thing I think most clients feel is I'm working so hard, I'm earning all this money, but I'm just not moving forward financially at a pace which I feel comfortable with. And so if you can start helping them move forward financially, then everything else falls into place. I mean, especially I, I, I get how that would work if you're a little younger as well, because if I'm the guy that's telling you about all these awesome things that I'm doing in a space that you can't touch for another 15, 20 years, you're like, yeah, well, that's great. But I'm actually, you know, struggling to, to keep up with the school bills and the more like, you know, you're, you're kind of creating something for me that I, it, I can't even think about that yet. Yeah, that's such a huge point. I mean, we always want something now um, and we're very, very, we're well, not great. So so good at uh, delaying gratification. So when people yeah. sit down with clients and say, give me the wins now. How can you help me now? My super, when I can access it, 67, 77, who knows what it's going to be by the time we're there. But if you can help me now, pay off my house faster now, that for there's an instant sort of um, feeling of I am making progress, I am working hard, but I've got something to show for it. And also a lot of advisors who are what we call dealing with the retirees or the older um, client segment market, they're always asking, how, how do I get into the accumulator space? The absolute winner is helping them manage cash flow, pay down debt. And a debt reduction program um, is the absolute perfect door opener to basically build your accumulator client base. I'd be really keen um, if perhaps we could get, uh, see if we can find that white paper and just, you know, I think that would be really helpful for advisors to see that Australians yeah. are asking for this one and two are happy to pay for it. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, we, we talked, we had an event earlier in the year talking about the 80, 20 and uh, you know, 20% of Australians getting advice and it sounds like the 80% are asking well, a chunk of that anyway, asking for cash flow management. Yeah. Yeah. Cash flow management and help me own my home. Yeah. Faster through that yeah sure um moving moving on to um perhaps what what uh was the original introduction for for how i came came to to be introduced to was uh the peer-to-peer -peer lending space so you know extending on to being really really well structured around debt um i think probably is, is a bit of a, a feeder into um alternative debt solutions and and the like so um perhaps if i could ask you how how that's working for you Oh, wow. I mean, in terms of winners, it's been something which we've found has worked so well for me on a personal level and also so well for clients. And it's something where people these days, I'm not too sure what everyone's view is on the market. 
I'm a little bit nervous. I'll be honest. I, I think things are very toppy, um, especially property wise and also in, on the share market side of things. So I, at this point in time, I just want income and I'm just chasing income. I'm chasing, chasing peace of mind. And I just want my clients to be able to sleep at night and knowing that no matter what does happen, you're going to be getting consistent returns. So I personally do every single thing I advise clients on myself before I okay. do that for clients. Um, just to test the waters, I'd prefer to practice on myself and then from there, hey, if it has worked, then it usually um, I'll be able to educate the clients on what other options they've got there. So the way I advise is I'll say, this is what I'm investing in. This is my investment portfolio. I feel that most clients want to hear that more than, okay, well, what have you read about or anything like that? So where are you putting your money? That's what I'm interested in. So um, I use Rate Setter. I've been using Rate Setter for close to three years now. Um, and that's a peer to peer lending opportunity, which um, basically how it works is you've got people out there who've got credit card debt. And with this $15,000 credit card debt, they're usually online looking for a way to actually reduce the amount of interest because they've been charged 16% now. And so these guys will jump online looking for a personal loan and they'll come across the Rate Setter website. They'll jump on the rate setter, put in an online application form, and then rate setter will do the credit checks, the employment checks, and then they'll pre-approve that borrower for that $15,000 personal loan. They'll then come to me, the investor, and say, hey, would you like to lend Joe $15,000? And as a result, if you lend it out for three years, you're going to be looking at a 7.7% return. If you're going to be lending it out to Joe for five years, you're going to be looking at around about an 8.8% return. So... I mean, in this day and age, you know what the term deposits are paying. If I can get a 8.8% return or even a 7.7% return after fees, um, phenomenal return. So what I love about Rate Setter is they've got a provisional fund because my biggest risk as an investor is what happens if Joe doesn't pay? What happens if he yeah. misses it? And so rates have got a provisional fund. Now, every application from the borrowers, they actually have to pay an application fee. And this goes into this kitty or slush fund or provisional fund. And so in the event that Joe does miss a payment or defaults, then I've got the opportunity to then have that missed payment reimbursed to me through that provisional fund. And today that provisional fund has over $5 million in cash in it which gives me a beautiful safety net, a beautiful safety net. Saying that, not one person over the past five years at RateSitter has ever, ever not received a payment. Oh, wow, really? Okay, I was going to ask about that. So, no, you've not had any hiccups, not been blown up at all? Not one person in the past five years has missed a payment. 100% of their capital and interest has been paid back to the investors each and every time. So, does the, does the way... So, if I've, you know, as an investor, or if you're... If you're uh, if your client has, you know, say 20 grand that they, they came to, to have a, have a go at and they, they uh, uh, contribute those funds into this platform. Yes. And then is it, is it one, one borrower to that cash or is it, how, how does that work? Yeah. So there's different sort of uh, peer to peer lenders. So society one is another one. Um, okay. They have more of a pooled approach, whereas rate set is more of a one-to-one -one approach. Um, I mean, the minimum investment on rate set is $10. Oh, wow. uh, you, can, you can just start with $10, which is phenomenal. Uh, the average investment is usually around fifteen dollars to $20,000. So I find it great um, for those clients, especially when they're paying down debt and they've obviously they're paying interest at say three, four percent and they can pull 8.8% on the other side. Um, it's, it's quite a nice little play there, but it's just great for those clients who are sort of nearing retirement as well and may have an SMSF and just want a consistent, solid return, 7.7%. Um, you take that all day, every day. So do I get a do I get a profile as as the investor of, of who the who the borrower is? No, no, you don't find out the actual details of borrowers, but the I mean the amount of loan applications rates that are declined is stunning. Like it's I don't know the exact figure, but it's more well and truly most of the applications they decline it's triple a rated in my eyes um so they're very very selective very it's got to be super clean um no one with defaults or arrears or anything of that nature on their credit file so yeah they're very selective with their borrowers and as a result that's why they got a hundred percent uh return of capital rate that's what i was going to ask actually so it's not like uh the the, the guys that can't get money any anywhere else it's, it's like a last last resort yeah, this is this is not a second tier third tier non-conforming space this is absolute white triple a grade okay how are clients finding it 
Unbelievable. You know, you've got a client here who could have money exposed um, in the share market. They're checking it all the time. There's that anxiety. That's, is it up? Is it down? This is just pure peace of mind, 7.7% per annum, but that's paid every single month onto the platform. And so those clients in retirement are even able to use that as an income stream and supplement uh, that pension if they're indeed on that. Yeah, wow. Um, okay, and there's that provisional fund as well, which I imagine works as a ratio to the overall loan book. Yeah, that's it. So, I mean, you've got $5 million in cash sitting there to take any um, bad loans or any missed payments out of it. So you've got a huge amount of peace of mind. There's over 8,000 investors who have and are using Ratesetter at the moment. So it's certainly been proven and tested. And for me, it's very, very hard to beat when you're looking at um, a solid income play in this day and age, you're just finding that the bonds, the term deposits just aren't cutting it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, you know, the profile of clients I work with are generally a little older. And uh, unfortunately, you know, when you are drawing an income and the interest rates are so low, um, often clients do look at, at, the, at equities as a, as a way of increasing yield. But unfortunately, you're, you're, you're increasing the inherent risk profile as well. And it's a pretty quick way to blow yourself up financially if you're, you're chasing, chasing yields in, in low interest rate environments. Um, you know, and, and often alternatives are, are probably worth, worth a little look in. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at the arrears rate. I mean, you go into the rate set of website, there's just all the information for lenders. I mean, obviously there's the borrowers as well, um, all the information, all the statistics. I mean, their arrears rate this year, like the loans who are behind, 0.17%. Yeah, wow. So on a traditional mortgage book, you might have an arrears rate close to the 2% mark. Um, and so this is 0.17% arrears rate, which is phenomenally clean. And, uh, and a, uh, an English-based business, I think, isn't it? They start out of the UK, yeah. 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 Um, so from, the, from my, I mean, I've not used them before, but I'm, I'm keenly, keenly looking at them. My sense is the model's been used over in, in the UK and, you know, gone from strength to strength and they've replicated the model for the Australian market. Yeah, 100% right. And that's a good thing. So you don't want to be sort of the trailblazer and yeah. you know, take all the hits. It's something where this is a proven and tested model. Uh, it's worked tremendously well over in the UK. They've brought it over to Australia. And to date, I mean, 100% um, return of capital and interest. I mean, that's unblemished. Yeah, wow. Wow, that's that's fantastic. Um, all right, so that's that's the peer-to-peer -peer space. Um, moving, moving back on to, I guess, the... Um, the loan side of things, you did, did mention something to me that was a, a little interesting and I'm not, not totally across it. I actually thought I'd, I'd ask the question live um, rather, rather than having a, a chat before it, about it before. Um, you did mention um, some remarkable numbers around interest rates on mortgages for, for those looking to pay off their loans. Um, and I'm starting to get a question or two come through on the, the white labeled service. So perhaps we can start with the home ownership rate reducer. Sure. So yeah, there's a, um, a new product which we've developed called Rate Reducer. Um, and what this product does is we've got an ATO product ruling um, and that lasts for three years. Any clients who are onto that program uh, are grandfathered after the three year period. And so what this does, it allows us to help the client pay the house off faster because we can heavily discount their home loan as long as they also have an investment loan. So if you've got any clients out there who've got a home loan, and an investment loan, then they'd qualify for what's called the rate reducer. And we can discount their home loan rate down to as low as 2%. 2%. So you've got a client here who's paying interest at say 3.99. And from there, if we can get their home loan down to 2%, that just accelerates that um, debt reduction. And also um, they're going to be in a position where they own their home a little bit faster. So um, they have to have a home loan and an investment loan to qualify. And from there, we just do the numbers where it doesn't work for clients. If they owe more on their home loan than what they do on their investment loan, um, the, the numbers don't really work out that well. But if you've got any clients who owe less on their home than what they do on their investment, this is a phenomenal, um, just great point of difference where you can say, hey, you said pay off debt with one of your um, key priorities there. We can start looking at some funding options where you can look at a rate reducer program where you've got a 2% home loan. And with that, the best part about it is every single year as the client's reducing principal, they get a rate reduction on their loan. So from there, that's, that's been yeah, very unique, very popular. We do a lot of business with real estate agents because they've got landlords. And so we'll go through their whole rent role and just offer this program a great lead generation as well. Great lead generation, being able to say to a landlord, hey, you've got an investment loan, do you have a home loan as well? Yes, or you could potentially access um, a 
home loan as low as 2%. It's kind of, I mean, after inflation, it's free cash. <laughs> yeah, it's free cash. So where, where that sits is the, uh, the investment loan is tilted a little higher. Um, so that starts at a high rate there. And then every single year that comes down. So depending on our client's loan balance, we'll do all the, um, the numbers. We'll give the calculator through to any of the advisors who want that as well. So they can actually do the numbers for their clients. And so we've got a lot of advisors who know their clients who have a home loan investment property. They'll put the client's home loan balance into the calculator. They'll put the client's investment loan balance into the calculator and that'll tell them exactly what their rates will start at. And as a result, if we, we can help that client become debt-free faster, I think that's really the name of the game. Oh, mate, I, the amount of times I've seen clients come in for the first time, you know, higher marginal tax, tax rates, yeah. uh, aggressively paying down, you know, the, the wrong loans and not quite understanding the dynamic of the non-deductible uh, nature of, of principal interest. Um, and, you know, when, when you do, it, it doesn't take long to do a short cash flow management exercise around, um, you know, the power of being just a little bit thoughtful around debt management. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the education is whole key to this and that's our job as the advisor is these guys are paying us to help educate them and improve their financial position and help them achieve their financial goals there. And so we've just got to always come back to what's a client want, what's their most important uh, financial goal and that, that whole space around home ownership if they do have a home is certainly one and I'm just talking obviously broadly about the accumulator space I know it's different for the high net worth so I know it's different for the retirees but for the accumulators that's really the sweet spot well mate I think to be honest uh, the accumulator space is probably where where people are really struggling to articulate a value proposition that makes sense so perhaps it's around the product side and 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 uh you know and and being, being the, the one that can offer things that perhaps aren't available on the, on mass market? Yeah, you've got to ask your question, why aren't they available on the mass market? You know I mean? Who designs products? Banks. Why do they design them to keep people in debt? Why do they do that to make more interest? High profits, happier shareholders, more value to the bank. That's the bottom line there. So mm. we've got to really just work out. So we designed a program that's going to help people pay off debt, be our debt in half that time. And as a result, the banks certainly don't have any vested interest in that whatsoever. But it is all funded by the two biggest banks in Australia. Okay, so it's not, it's not restricted to one product provider? No, so we've got funding lines, wholesale funding lines with two of the largest fun, uh, banks in Australia there. So um, that's all white labelled, but the funding is coming from uh, the big four. Okay, great. So it's not these tier twos that uh, you're at risk of having skyrocket as soon as we, we have a shaky, yeah. shaky, uh, shaky ground. <laughs> Yeah, um, actually, it's, it's probably it's, it's a little off topic, but it's just something that I, I thought about, uh, you know, working with brokers in the past and uh, often they'll chase to the or they'll run to the tier two lenders uh, who are attract, uh, attracting uh, discounted uh, interest rates in the early days. I, I just wonder if you've got any thoughts on uh, what risk that implies, uh, you know, in shifting interest rate environments. You know, we're at, we're at, you know, all things being equal, pretty close to a floor, if not the floor. Um, so, you know, are these guys at risk of skyrocketing in, 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 uh, in the future if, if we see the RBA do anything? <laughs> yeah, man, such a great point. So, I mean, when you're around an industry for 14, 15 years, you really start to see trends and patterns. And so what you just said there, I really do agree with. We are certainly at the interest rate floor. And that's not from a reserve bank perspective. It's from a bank perspective because these banks are now tightening credit because of APRA and whatever requirements they've, I mean, I don't believe that anyway. I think a lot of it's uh, to really line the shareholders' pockets, but predominantly <laughs> they're, um, they've been told they need to have a, a lot more um, capital. And as a result, their lending criteria is now tightened. When you tighten credit or lending policies or liquidity, therefore people can't offer as much because their loan um, or basic income can't service as much in loans. And so when people can't borrow as much from a bank, they can't offer as much for property. And if their offers can't consistently continue to grow and grow, that property market should then start to go sideways as opposed to the growth that Melbourne and Sydney has been having. So I really feel that there's going to be certainly a slow in the growth of property prices because of the tightening of credit. Um, and I really do believe personally, it's not going to be the reserve bank that's going to be putting up the rates. It's going to be the banks who are going to be putting up the rates on their existing clients. Because when you've got shareholders expecting $8 billion in profits and they're not lending as much, they've got to find those profits from elsewhere. And the easiest, fastest way to find a profit is just to put up interest rates on your existing clients. There's no marketing, there's no labor costs. It's just pure straight profit off the bat, and I really, unfortunately, see that's going to be happening a lot more over the coming years. 
Yeah, I, I think, well, I mean, if you look at the past couple of um, RBA meetings where, where there's been no changes, the banks have kind of ignored that, haven't they? And they're, they're moving independent. Um, you've got to question the, the impact of policy for around, around lending. Yeah, I mean, you give a, um, a bank an opportunity to basically put any excuse for why they need to put up rates on their existing clients, they're going to take it and run with it. You know, it's such a profitable move to put up clients' rates by 0.15% on a back book. I mean, you got to look at the number of mortgages they've got. It's phenomenal. Um, yeah. Just off that one move. And when they're all doing it, we as customers, I mean, we can't go anywhere because we move from one to the next. And then before, you know, like you just said there, you jump into bed with a new bank and then they do it anyway. So um, that's the unfortunate position for our clients and for us personally is that um, these banks, are, I feel, just going to consistently ratchet up those rates. Uh, people's borrowing capacity is getting tighter and tighter and therefore those probably prices I don't think will continue to soar like they have been. Fair enough. So I guess in, in a conclusion from today, we can, we can end up with uh, getting your mortgage down to 2%, putting a little bit of flavour in peer-to-peer -peer lending and, uh, and, and yeah, and uh, buying, buying bank stocks because they're, uh, they're profitable businesses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I said I'd be certainly taking the peer-to-peer -peer lending over the banking stocks. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I think even some of those hybrid products are only paying a couple of percent over, over uh, uh, the 180-day bank bill swap rate. It's, uh, you know, it, 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 it doesn't work for everybody. Risk reward, you know, that's what it's coming down to is the risk reward on the peer to peer lending space for me at this point in time is just so attractive. It's so appealing. Um, and as a result, I'm just going to be putting my money there and, and telling clients what I'm doing with my money. This is probably the most important thing to them. And, and you, you did, uh, we did touch on the numbers, but it was about uh, market rates on that sort of stuff. I know it would depend on the, 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 the borrower, but we're sort of high single digits. Yeah, so the beautiful part about the peer-to-peer -peer is you can put money in for one month, 4.4% per annum. You can put it in for three years, 7.7% .7 per annum. You can put it in for five years, 8.8% .8 per annum. That's net of fees. All right, and they're, they're fixed returns. So you, you basically de determine how long your, you, the, the cash is with them and, and you spit back an interest rate. Absolutely right. Locked in, and like a fixed rate. And I mean, if you're pulling 7.7, 8.8%, returns in this environment, I think uh, you'd take it pretty comfortably. And uh, if you need the cash back, uh, breaking the term? Not, no. The liquidity is obviously the downside there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, that's that's no different to a term deposit, is it? No. And, and what I do with my money is I'll put some in the one-month money, one-year money, three-year money, and five-year money. So just consistently money coming uh, and maturing at different stages. Um, and so that's a really good way to, to be able to enhance the liquidity. Just put money in the one month, one year, three year and five year options. Makes sense. Uh, for those for those guys on Facebook Live, I might ask for you just to send through any questions that, that you've got for Scott. Uh, we'll probably stick around for a minute or two. Uh, Croydon Ratcliffe asks, uh, on average, how much does the white labeled service cost for advisors to outsource? So perhaps I, I'll, I'll rephrase that. Is that a, um, you've, you've got a structured model or is it sort of something that you'd ask each advisor to, to maybe have an individual conversation with you on? Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's going to spin out here. We actually pay you for that service. So we pay you, the advisor, um, a trial commission for that loan, as well as an upfront uh, commission for the introduction of that client. We get paid obviously by the bank there. So predominantly you're going to be adding another passive income or a saleable asset to your business by way of building a trial book uh, from those existing clients who are on that money management program. So yeah, we actually are paid by the bank. We share that commission with you who you an owner of the client, you are the advisor. And so you're actually going to be, it's going to be another profit center for your business. Wonderful. All right. Thank you for that. I, I might ask, um, so off the back of today, if, if perhaps we could just get that, that white paper, but perhaps um, just some, you know, info on, on that. Uh, it sounds like there's already a, a little bit of interest. For sure. No, that'd be great. Wonderful. Well, I, um, I really do appreciate the, the time, Scott. It's, um, yeah, I know it's not always easy to take an hour out of your day to, to talk to a bunch of young, young advisors. So it's, it's really appreciated. Um, and I think you're, you're part of the, the community. So guys, if there are any questions that flow on after uh, you've had a chance to, to watch or, or listen to today, I'd, I'd encourage you to uh, approach Scott or ask a question in the forum. He's uh, yeah, very, very approachable and uh, yeah, happy to, happy to chat about uh, what, what he's doing in, in the business because it's, it's very interesting and a bit, bit outside of centre, which is always uh, yeah, nice, nice to see as well. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your time and look forward to speaking to you soon. Thanks, guys. All the best. Have a wonderful day.